heard of Mitt Romney. Still, what? I beg your pardon? <laughs> All right. On March 31st, 2019, a player named Regent reported a curious bug. Supposedly dashing at certain enemies with mercenary caused them to ricochet away. While he didn't realize it at the time, Regent had just stumbled upon Risk of Rain 2's greatest mystery, a technique that if mastered would allow the user to insta-kill any flying enemy. However, the method behind such a strategy remains unsolved to this day. A few weeks ago, I started working on a character guide for Mercenary, and the original plan was to spend a week on it, get it out, and never think about it again. But as I started doing my research for that video, I ran into a bit of an issue. For those of you that don't know, Mercenary has this weird tech slash glitch where sometimes dashing at a flying enemy causes it to fly away, usually killing it or almost killing it. I went over this a little bit in my tech video from January, and I've been aware of it for a while, but when it came time to actually give a good explanation on how to do it, problems arose mainly because it seems like everybody has a different understanding of this mechanic. Here's a list of the tips I ran into. You want to hit the center of the target, but you also want to hit the edge of the target. You want to start the dash inside the enemy's hitbox, but you also want to end the dash inside the enemy's hitbox. You want to make sure you're sprinting, but this only works when you're not sprinting. You got all that? That was just a sample of the different accounts and conflicting information I ran into while working on this project. Furthermore, my own testing didn't really match with any of these theories. Now, I could have just ignored it and released this guide two weeks ago with my interpretation of the mechanic, like somebody with good time management skills, but that would have only added to the confusion, and thus began a downward spiral of madness and sleepless nights. The in-laws are scared, okay? Now, a few of you are probably thinking, you heckin' loser, this isn't important at all, you've wasted your life. Shut up, okay? I get enough of that from my kids. This is important because if we truly figured this out, it could completely shake the foundation of how Merc is played. So I spent the next few weeks doing my absolute best to get to the bottom of this. I probably spent 50 hours testing and practicing this technique, and the path this led me down ended up being so intriguing and so bizarre, I figured I could just make this its own video. So here's some basic things I'm certain of. For this technique, both dashes work, but focus to hold is more consistent, speed affects it in some way, and where you hit the enemy matters. That's it. That's all we know. The rest is just speculation. A really common thing I saw people saying was dashing without sprinting makes this easier. I'm pretty confident this isn't true because the game treats sprint and non-sprint dashes the same way. When you aren't sprinting, there's a dot at the center of your screen, and when you are sprinting, it's an upside down V. And every time you do the dash, the crosshair is a V, regardless of what you were doing before. Another really common one is hitting the center of mass on an enemy causes it to fly away, presumably because it's the most solid part of the enemy and hitting it there destabilizes it. This is what I believe for a while, and I think it's what I said in my tech video. I no longer believe this to be true. I actually think the opposite is true now, where the further away you land the dash from the center, the more likely it is to be successful. With the center being the most stable part, it makes more sense that hitting it on the edges would work better. And this is what my testing reflected. Hitting it in the center works if you have a lot of movement speed, but generally I found that the further away you are from the center, the more momentum you can transfer, at least when it comes to the alloy worship unit. Lastly, ending the dash inside the enemy's hitbox causes the game to freak out and force the enemy away from Merc. This makes a lot of sense and is definitely a strong theory, but it's not true in every case. There are times that you land inside the hitbox and Merc is forced out instead. Sometimes you can do this tech at the beginning or in the middle of the dash. Additionally, items that add movement speed change the endpoint of the dash, and if you stack like 30 goat hooves, you can clearly see the dash didn't start or end inside the alloy worship unit. We still can't rule this out as a possibility because there may be multiple ways to do it, but I feel like this is strong enough proof to say it's at least possible to do this tech without ending inside of the hitbox. We'll come back to this later. I spent hours neglecting my adult responsibilities to see if I could find any consistency here, and beyond hitting the target as far away from the center of mass as possible, I was unable to find anything new. So the next thing I did was ask around, and I figured the best place to start was with somebody that has a lot of experience with this character, and who better than Cabbage? If you don't know Cabbage, he's the Prismatic Trial guy. He's done every Prismatic Trial without getting hit on Mercenary for the last two years. He actually made a tutorial on the dash slam about two years ago, and in the video he postulates that ending the dash inside the enemy's hitbox was the key to this working. Now, I didn't really know what to make of this, but in the video he was landing it pretty consistently, even on Greater Wisps, which are much harder to do than the bigger bosses because of their smaller hitboxes. 
So it seemed like he had a pretty good understanding of this mechanic. Now this video is two years old and he hasn't said anything about it since on his YouTube channel. So I reached out to see if he had any additional insight. Hey Cabbage, I'm thinking about making a video on Merc's Dash Slam. I know you made a video on it a couple years ago, but do you have any additional insight on how it works other than what you stated in that video? Hmm, I'm not really the right person to ask about that. Ever since the Merc rework, I found it to be more inconsistent. So it was worth a shot, not really much to- Wait a minute. What's this about a Merc rework? So, a bit of history for Risk of Rain 2. When the game initially came out, Mercenary worked a little bit differently. On August 11th, 2020, with the 1.0 update, Merc was revamped. The main thing they did was give him the exposed debuff. They also changed a couple of statistics, but I didn't really see anything that changed the way the slam worked. However, I did find a very general change for the dashes. Mobility skills are now considered sprinting, scaling with sprint speed multipliers, and also sprinting after use. So I guess before this update, energy drinks wouldn't increase the distance on dashes, and using a movement ability was also not considered sprinting. This explains why I kept seeing people say you have to be not sprinting to do this tech. And while I can just sit here and speculate, I can't get any concrete answers on what changed without actually having that version of the game. Perhaps the answers I seek lie hidden in the past. Alright, so all I had to do was download an old copy of the game and solve this mystery once and for all. But again, I ran into a bit of an issue. It's not as simple as just play the old version lol. Steam only lets you download the most recent patch, and I would need to go back two years to the Artifacts 2.0 update or earlier to test this. So after talking to some people, I was led to the down patching guide on speedrun.com. I guess some speedruns are performed on older patches, but the process for doing this is one of the sketchiest things I've ever seen. <laughs> so listen to this. They link you to this GitHub page where you download a file, you extract it, do all that good stuff, but then when you run the file, your computer will freak out and think it's a virus, which is usually how these small community made projects are, so it wasn't anything too alarming. But when you click it, nothing happens. So you then have to open up the command prompt and run the file from the back end. I've never seen a file work that way in my entire life, but despite my better judgment, I stuck with it to see what would happen. But then, they tried to get me to input my Steam username and password into this command prompt connected to this weird file that my computer doesn't want me to run. What? Why? <laughs> Listen, I'm sure the speedrunners are good guys and they're not stealing your shit, but come on. They could not have made this any more suspicious if they tried. Oh yes, you give us Steam password and we give you 30 second time save on any percent. It is good deal, trust, trust. So I ended up not going through with it for obvious reasons. They also ended up not having any copies of the game before 1.0, but I felt like that was too funny not to highlight. So a correction for that last bit, I want to be very clear, the speedrunners actually have nothing to do with that program. I guess it's just a tool that's used for a lot of games. I did a little bit of research to find out if it was safe or not, and the only thing that came up was this Reddit thread from six months ago, and it's the most Reddit thing I've ever seen. Is Depot Downloader safe? I've searched around but couldn't find much about this. It asks me to log in using my Steam credentials, and I don't really like that if there's a slight chance it just stores your info or something. Not safe. And why is that? It is safe, actually. Stop spreading disinformation because you're ignorant about what the program is. Sharing login credentials with anyone or anything is a bad idea and dangerous, period. You can tell me it's safe and you can trust them till you're blue in the face, but it's a very bad idea. There are plenty of other ways to enable access to a system via trusted token and API that don't involve user login credential sharing. You're not sharing login credentials with an unidentified, untrustworthy third party for hopes of getting something out of it. You're letting a program use your account to do something that it needs your account for. Have you ever logged into a website that requires your Steam account or linked your Steam account to any piece of social media? Chances are you have. Those websites don't need your credentials most of the time because they're not doing anything that require them. The calls those websites make to Steam is public information, but they still need your account itself linked to accomplish the task. Programs like Depot Downloader are no different than that, except what they accomplish requires higher levels of access. You're simply just ignorant. That's a quick way to end up on IHaveBeenPwned.com. They're your creds, it's your account, you do what you like. I, however, know that there are plenty of other ways to do the same thing. You are ignorant of the hundreds of companies and systems that are compromised every year. Maybe not best way. It works, though. Damn, it feels good to be a gangster. Wow, what a meeting of the minds here on reddit.com. So I ended up finding a copy of the Artifacts 2.0 update on Reddit. It was really easy, I didn't have to enter my username and password into the MySpace source code for this one. And in this version of the game, Mercenary feels a lot different. I can't really put my finger on why, but after playing this for a bit, I can say with confidence, at least in this version of the game, 
you can do the dash slam by ending inside of the enemy's hitbox. That is 100% how it used to work. I also did a side-by-side -side comparison of the dashes. On the left is the current version of the game, and Artifacts 2.0 is on the right. Now, they do desync a little bit, but by the end they do come back together. It's hard to tell if this is just a visual update, but it definitely seems like the speed and distance of the dash remains the same despite the change. Now, I wanted to do a similar test dashing through enemies, but mod support for Artifacts 2.0 is almost non-existent in 2022, so I couldn't really do a side-by-side -side comparison. Cabbage did mention something about Merc's dash having a small stutter post-rework, and he's definitely right. There's always been a small stutter, but it seems a lot more prominent post-rework. Now, I have no idea why this would affect it. If anything, it seems like having more of a stutter would be beneficial, but maybe the stutter slows down the game and prevents you clipping. I'm not sure. Okay, so this is all well and good, but how does this help us? For one, I would say ending the dash inside the enemy's hitbox is a confirmed way of doing the transfer, or at least it was at one time. I have a feeling there's more than just one way to do the tech, but we'll get to that. So a few questions I had were why focus assault was better and why movement speed helps. And I think it has something to do with momentum, Focus Assault has more momentum, and obviously movement speed gives you more momentum as well. It could be a distance thing, but that would be surprising. If the theory about landing the dash inside the enemy's hitbox holds water, this would make sense, because the more speed you have, the more likely you are to clip through an object. Another really big find was no clipping inside the alloy worship unit, and then dashing was really, really consistent. The closer I noclip to the center, the less it moved, which I think proves my theory from earlier. So this led me to believe that at least one of the methods, if not multiple, involves Merc being inside of the hitbox at some point in the dash. So to cut to the chase, I spent a lot more time testing and asking around, and I've come to the conclusion that I'm close to figuring it out, but I'm also out of my depth. I think there's very clearly something going on behind the scenes that I just don't understand, and that's really hard for me to say. I do have my own theory that I think is pretty strong, but like everyone else's, it's also flawed. Here it goes. I don't think it matters where you start or end the dash. I think the angle is much more important. You want to try to get Mercenary's hitbox to be partially inside of the enemy's hitbox and partially outside of it. This can also be done at any point in the dash. Visually, Merc may look sideways when he does the dash, but his hitbox actually never changes. He's like one of those fucking bean toys that were always advertised but nobody had. So the best place to do the boopity boop on the alloy worship unit is right here on the forehead. You can also do it at the bottom and from other angles. Speed definitely plays a role and helps you clip into the target. It also gives you more momentum. Additionally, the alloy worship unit will gain more momentum the further way you clip from the center. So for example, hitting it here will be more effective than hitting it here. I think there's some more to it. It's very likely there are multiple ways this deck can be performed, and if that is the case, it makes perfect sense that it remains unsolved. It's very hard to formulate a theory for something when you're working with two different datasets and you don't know which is which. With that, I leave the rest to you guys. I've wasted an unbelievable amount of my life trying to figure this out, and as much as I'd like to end this video with a concrete answer, I just can't. So I'm hoping somebody much smarter than me sees this and we can get to the bottom of this once and for all. I did manage to find a pretty consistent strat to insta-kill Voidling, and I'll talk about that in my Merc Guide, so subscribe to be notified for that. Leave a like if you enjoyed, and thanks for watching. That's all for now.